Now we've got most of the elements that we need to create our drawing. We just need one more reference. We've got as much information out of this floor plan as we can. So now we can turn the floor plan off. We can only do one trace reference at a time. So now we're going to switch references to our section reference or our section drawing. Right click, show as trace reference. Again, it's probably going to be hiding or off the page somewhere. I think it's underneath here at the moment. So we'll say drag reference, move that across. Yep, there we go. It was hiding. And now we're just going to check its height and check its position to make sure that we're, we've got the right orientation. So again, we'll drag reference and I'll use the ground level as the reference up or down, whichever way we need to go to get that right. And we see, yep, that's, that's already aligned, so that's great. It doesn't matter how far out we go necessarily. What do we need to bring across? Maybe we want to bring across the idea of the door or window head heights. Uh, maybe we're looking more at the position of the eave. Now this particular section that I did is underdeveloped. We need to spend a bit more time on this to, to make that right. Uh, I've done some different sections which are more detailed previously in these videos. Uh, so we're not going to be able to get a lot of information from this one as it is anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. Alright, so let's jump in. What's the one thing that we will see that we do need? If I was just to project this a little bit more, we'd see that we want to end up with a an eave height or a fascia of about 345. So I can use that as my reference. So if I started with this point here, which we see is obviously the top, then I could drag a copy down 345 and use that as my reference. Now we see that this roof steps up here. My section doesn't show that anywhere. Uh, so if we're uncertain, go back to the floor plan and see what that's doing. So we can see that this steps in. Now that's not where our section is. So how do we work that out? We have to understand the relationship from our roof edge to our roof edge or our wall edge to our wall edge. So we see that's 2396. It's a rather strange number, which means we've probably got the brick dimension wrong somewhere. So let's just turn that back on again show us trace reference. We see that this one is not quite aligned. It should be to the inside face. So let's just stretch that one right now. Edit, reshape, stretch. Sorry. Edit, reshape, stretch. And here we will need to do the same. Edit, reshape, stretch. Now we've got a much better dimension that we should be getting. We'll turn off that trace reference. 2400. Alright, so now let's go back to our drawing. And if we were to go to our elevation or our section, and we were to move this line or copy this line, move, drag, copy, 2400, and project that up, that's going to give us an idea of where that eave line would be. So we'll go back to our section, sorry, our elevations again, and now we'll just trace that line across as well. I'll just do the top in this case, and then we'll bring that down, 3, 4, 5. So we see those are overlapping, it's a little bit confusing, so I'm going to take those and chop them off short so they don't confuse us any further. Great. So now we've got enough information, uh, the only one that was left really was the door and window head height. We can see that we do have a bit of a mixed bag. So we have one door here, which is the garage door. So that's understandably lower. What do we understand of this garage door? How low is that? 
that's currently set at 172 so two bricks maybe and then from that we could drag a copy 2100 and again we'll keep that nice and short so we can add that door in great so lots of reference lines uh, we can't really see much of the top of the door and window uh, it's probably going to be in line with this fascia from what we understand anyway so that's probably fine as it is let's start adding detail so bricks we've got a lot of bricks this time so that's good let's alt to pick up that setting of the, the brick fill and let's start drawing that. So again, we're just gonna use our reference and I'm gonna deliberately go over this wall. And I want to stop here. Now it's asking my for a reference point. So I'm choosing where do I want to make that reference line to. So I can just use the bottom corner. Now, of course, I need to cut out these bricks as well for this door. What's the easiest way to do that? This line is in the way, so I'm going to cut that line. Select my fill, so left click on the edge. I want to subtract from polygon, and then space bar for magic wand, and that's gonna cut a hole. Now, the brick that we've got already has an outline it's hard to see that at the moment because we have so much other information on the page so we're just going to do our best to trace this whole building and so we get the majority of our lines all in place and then once we've done that then we're going to have a look at what that means and see if our numbers are all working I'm just going to do this as two different fills uh, it doesn't matter we could do it all as one Let's try that again. And then again, we'll cut that out. Now, the other way of uh, using subtract from polygon, we can do, sometimes it doesn't work very well, is to select the fill, select the fill tool, and that will usually cut it for us. Uh, in this case, we don't have a still, so let's add in a line for that, drag that up, and we're going to set that at one meter for now. That's not a brick height, but we'll, we'll play with that later. Now we need to add in weatherboards or this compressed fiber cement sheeting. Now we did this over here. We did it a little bit lighter than what it's represented as, but that's fine. We might need to drag a copy of this line up here. Another 500. And we'll select from here all the way up to this point. And same way, we will now select that and subtract to cut out the hole. We should have gone over the top of this door. How can we add to polygon? Same way select, add to polygon, and I'm going to choose the rectangular method which is the second option here, select, drag across, so now we've got that. Now we're pretty close, I might just do one more to show the roof sheeting, I'm not going to worry too much about the capping at the moment, so let's go into our fills because we haven't had to draw the roof sheeting before, and we're going to use something like I've sort of said before there's not much to choose from here let's use our weatherboards vertical because it doesn't really matter what the name is it's just about as long as it's showing how it should now we don't have a, a line for where that is I'm just going to extend this all the way from here at the moment and then we'll subtract from here over to here. What did we do there? 
Ah, maybe I did plus. There we go. All right, so we'll take away or turn this off now. I'll usually just drag this to the side at a set distance, maybe 100 meters away, just so we can now see what we're looking at better. We should have enough information to be able to draw this now. If we get stuck, we can always put it back. Or the other way, of course, is we could put this onto a trace reference. Um, so I'll undo that, edit, cut, and we've already got an elevation reference, paste in original location, back to our elevations, right click elevation reference, show as trace reference, and then what we probably just need to do is turn that back on and then say reset to default position and it should move that into place. So now we can see the reference in the back, uh, but it's not as dominant, so we can also see what we're trying to draw and trying to create. So that's the end of this video. Uh, in the next one, we'll have a look at just how to do the final touch ups of these fills and um, just again how to look at how to understand the hatching, but otherwise it's just more of the same stuff, so I'm not going to bore you with any more of this.